Hello and welcome. This is Stacker 2020. And today I'm going to be talking about scrapping and pouring copper. I do have in front of me these six bars here, um, which was done from one session. And each of them weighs from 10, between 10 and 11 ounces. Um, now this was one group, we'll say. So one stack of uh, cables that I did scrap um, and then melt and pour. So and that's how I've been doing it. Now, if you stay tuned until the end of the video, I will show you all of the copper that I have poured so far. It has been a little bit of an obsession over the past month. Um, I haven't filmed much of it. It has just been something that has, uh, let's just say, distracted me through a little bit of a tough time uh, personally. So I sort of got like carried away with the scrapping copper. Um, now, I was really lucky that I was given a big box of single core um, old cables that someone had found in an old shed. So that gave me a really good start. And I had been collecting a whole bunch of copper cables, little odds and ends, old motors from broken um, bits and bobs. There was a broken lawnmower. There was a broken blender. Just anything that had a bunch of copper in, I had been putting aside. And as I said, over the last few months, I had been pouring a lot. So I'm just going to go through this bunch that I did here today. So basically, if you look at it, I'm going to put a picture up now of the cables that I started with that this all came from. So as you see from that bunch, I mean, it was it was all dirty old, you know, cables and there was a few um, like motherboards from old pcs and things like that as well which had some smaller copper bits in and uh, yeah just just a whole bunch of different odds and ends really so i cleaned all of that up obviously taking out the smaller wires out of the bigger plastic sleeves and then stripping that i did make my own little tool to do that uh, which i'll show you and demonstrate in a minute but essentially what i ended up with was three jars of you know these cables and bits stripped and again here's a a picture of those clean bits in the jars so the two basic tools which i used the most were the wire cutters and uh, the craft knife those were two things which were absolutely essential um just for cleaning up clipping off ends you know and, and dirty bits and whatever so you know essentially you could with a bit of difficulty do it with just these two tools but what I found made a massive difference um, was one thing that I actually made, and it was very straightforward. Um, essentially, it was taking this piece of wood, I drilled a few different size holes into the wood, and then, as you can see above the holes, these little grooves, which I'd just like uh, with a chisel put in. And then I was using actually you know these the, the the blades on these craft knives you can snap off each individual piece um so i just snapped off a piece of the blades and as you can see here um just hammered it in making sure the point was here you know and hammered it in above the holes and as you can see the sort of placement where that blade actually sits it sort of comes in a little bit into the hole um, likewise with this this other larger one there but um you know the, the the thing that i found was is i have three main sizes um there is some variations of the three sizes but i found that with these three adjusting this blade slightly up or down for the slight variations uh, was good enough and it's a very straightforward um way to do it so i'm just going to demonstrate now for you so what i found was necessary was having something that clamped over the blade to stop it moving because obviously if you're pulling something through um and it's catching and cutting uh, it's very it's liable to pull itself outwards if it's not clamped in so i just used um this monkey wrench to to clamp in you can use any kind of clamp really um and then the other thing which i found was very useful um so anyway we have our little bit of cable here and the other tool i found was very useful was actually some wire strippers i found just stripping the end 
again you can do that with a craft knife quite easily but i just found it was much quicker with the wire strippers so i was just stripping the end uh twisting the the, the exposed copper tight and then it's literally just a matter of threading it through so we just thread through the copper and uh now this is slightly smaller this is actually a very small gauge uh wire that i have here and this is a very small hole but regardless i just want to make sure that i'm pulling over the blade um so i'm just making sure here that it's touching the blade you can use your fingers to make sure it's in position and then the idea is just to literally pull that cable all the way through um and just pull it through like that and then what it does is it puts a nice split as you can see there puts a nice split into that plastic and then it allows us to just literally pull it off um so we just get a good start just make sure i'm focused yep you just get a good start like that and then you can literally just pull the copper out of the plastic sheet sorry there you go um and then i just yeah i just make a little bundle out of it twist it up make a little bundle and then that's ready to go into the furnace into the crucible to to melt so i do have my little jar of uh, bits and bobs that i've already collected so as i collect them i'm just putting them in a jar um, and it's that simple, you know, so it's a very simple tool. As I said, it was literally a piece of scrap wood, um, a little bit of a blade of one of these and uh, something to clamp it. And it made everything. I, I started off essentially taking, taking the cables and uh, making a start, making a slit start and then just trying to pull it through. But it was very tedious, kept, the plastic kept snapping and I had to restart the cuts. Um, so making this tool and just doing that quick pull through made a massive difference. Um, so yeah, highly recommended and very quick to make. So those were the tools I used. And uh, yeah, you know, was, 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 as I said, took me, was done over a month um the the amount you'll see at the end but this was all done in a day so i managed to scrap this um pour it and and you know melt it and pour it all in a day um so look i do have some footage now of um first of all of me heating up the crucible and then doing some of the pours i think i got four or five of the six pours here um which i'm going to put now and uh so i'm going to put a bit of my music playing over the top so enjoy the pours <laughs>
So there you go, that's the bars actually being poured and I uh, hope you didn't mind my guitar playing over the top. Just a little loop that I did uh, to give some ambiance to the videos. Um, yeah, so so these, as I said, this is what I got out of it. Now actually, um, I'm gonna, this picture I'm gonna put up now, this is them um, initially poured. What I got out was the six bars and the disc you see on top in that image is actually was what I left over and I left to cool in the crucible and this is it all with its fire scale still on so here's that in an image um yeah as i said so you saw the round puck that was on top that was just literally the leftovers after i poured and that went into the next pause i actually did um and then yeah actually here's an image of these six bars just after i had uh, cleaned them up using a brass uh, wire wheel on my drill uh, cleaning up the the fire scale off them before i actually hammered them into this finished product so here's the image of them uh, having been cleaned And as I said, this is then the final product. So actually we can have a closer look at one of the bars now. So yeah, I decided to go with these ones uh, with the hammered finish. Uh, you can see my eye privy there, my, my logo uh, privy mark there on the top in the middle. Um, yes, and I hammered like the tops and sides. And uh, then they are all on the bottom is where they are marked. So we can see this one here I've done as my S20 logo on the left and then you have the 999CU, 10.3 uh, ounces this one and this was number 004. Now this one as you see has got some quite heavy pitting in there and um, that's just I guess was actually I think this was the first one I poured so there was a little bit of uh, moisture and um, if you saw that first pour, there was a little bit of spitting. So I believe there was a little bit of moisture which was left in the 
um, in the mold, which I hadn't got out. Uh, so it did create sort of steam and a little bit of spittle and left these hollows. And if we look at the other ones where there wasn't any any spitting, you can see you don't have that pitting. Um, so yeah, so I've done them all um, with the same stamping style, 999 CU. Uh, this one's 10.3 and uh, yeah, I've numbered them. So that's the first six. Now I did promise that I would show you all of the copper that I've been pouring recently. So um, now this is actually, <laughs> I, as I said, I did get a little bit carried away and uh, a little bit obsessed with it all. Um, but I really did need the distraction. So anyway, so these are the six that you've just seen in the video so far. And actually I wanted to do ten of these hammered bars in total. So I did do that. I've got 10 of these hammered bars. And you've got to remember that all the bars that you see, they are going to be between 10 and 11 ounces. So that's my first 10 hammered bars there. Now I did do some non-hammered bars. Um, now the non-hammered bars, I still think they actually have a lovely texture. This is just how uh, the the copper cools naturally um, with this lovely sort of um, it's almost like geographical um, feel to it like you're looking at sort of like a overview of some hills but I really do like it. it has a lovely effect and I've stamped these slightly differently so I've left the bottoms of these blank and actually did done the stamping on the side so we can see this one 999 CU this is 10 ounces and then on the other side I put the date and the numbers well look we can get an idea there this is number 26 because this was the last one of these that I poured and yes, I did pour 26 of these bars and I'm going to take them out all now uh, in all their glory um, to see because it was a mammoth undertaking. And it sort of started actually, I poured my first few bars and uh, I was looking for a box to fit them all into. And I found this lovely little box, and it was a wooden box that I got some biscuits at Christmas time um, from Germany. And these, uh, this was what this was in this box originally. Um, oh, actually, I can see there's a few different styles here of stamping. I think I changed halfway through how I was actually stamping them. Um, so we will divide them up. Yeah, so anyway, so I found this uh, this box, this lovely wooden box, which I got these biscuits in, and it fit perfectly like these bars. It fit two of them like this, and I think it was six across that it fit um, perfectly. So I sort of started with me wanting to just pour, you know, a, a layer of them. And then after one layer, I was like, right, well, I'm going to pour another layer. And, uh, well, eventually I ended up pouring three layers of these bars. And, uh, well, you can see <laughs> in front of you what I ended up with. So there you go, in all its glory. 36 bars, all between 10 and 11 ounces of copper, all scrapped and poured by me in the last month or so. And uh, wow, it was a mammoth undertaking, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, so anyway, this is how I started. Uh, this is, I guess, the first 10, what's that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The first nine I did, I did in this style with the Privy there, um, the S20 logo there then 10.7 uh, ounces on one side and then on the other side 999 copper and then the number and the date i mean i quite like it but i actually more prefer the top being unencumbered apart from the tiny little eye privy um, so yeah, out of the two bars, the non-hammered bar styles, I actually prefer the one on the right here, which just has that eye privy and uh, then has the S20 logo actually on the side. Um, so yeah, so that was it, guys. That, that's my uh, mammoth undertaking. I think in all, 
Um, well, you know, it's over 360 ounces, so you're looking over 10 kilos. I think it's probably somewhere in the region of about 12 kilos of copper. And, uh, and this is the, the box, actually, that it came in. And so these are actually, uh, as I said, was a biscuit box. And you can see, if I put them in the box, it just fits perfectly too. And width-wise, as I said, it literally fits perfectly um six so it was it was almost designed for that size uh, mold you know so that's why i ended up pouring so much and getting carried away with it anyway that's it for now um i guess this is a pretty long video at this point but i hope you enjoyed it um i'll see you all very soon take care have a lovely day and bye bye